So this week, I want you to journey with me. Turn your Bibles if you got it. Galatians chapter 5, online family. I want y'all to jump in, get some notepads, get some pencils, papers, wherever you are. I want you to really tap in to this word today because I believe God's going to speak to us. Galatians chapter 5. For the second time, I'm going to go ahead and start reading. I say then, oh God, here we go. Walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desires of the flesh. I'm going to say that again. Walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under. God, stay with me. If you, are, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality. I just want to do a dramatic pause there. Moral impurity. <laughs> Promiscuity. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I'm warning you about these things as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Good God of it. Have, have, you ever, have you ever had a child or been around or been a child and had this said to you? Have you ever had a, a child who, you ever had an individual who, who, who were, they were trying to act on a level that they were not? Have you ever had a, a, a young child speak as if they were an adult? Have you ever seen it done? They went and borrowed some words that they heard somebody say they watched a TV show, maybe it was on YouTube, and, and, and there are a couple words that you said to this child. Now, of course, I'm only going to say the appropriate words because I know y'all be saying all kinds of stuff, but, but, but there are certain words. Have you ever found yourself saying to a child, you think you're grown? Have you ever have you I mean have you ever have you ever walked in or not even a child sometimes it's a teenager that made some decisions and, and when it's a teenager it's a little bit different. Oh, you think you're grown now, huh? Have you ever have you ever said that to anybody? Amen. Has anybody ever said that to you? Well, brothers and sisters, I submit to you today that there are times in our lives where we can pontificate or present the idea or the mirage that we are further in our lives than we actually are. And there are times that we can present that we are mature and present that we are uh, uh, the, the, the very elite oracles of God. And there are times in our lives where the Holy Spirit has to come along and look at us and has, he, sometimes lovingly he has to say, you think you've grown. I think there, there are times, when, see, I, I think we all talk about, he's a good, good father. So you are. So you are. But the Bible also says he's such a good father that he chastens those that he loves. And sometimes a part of God's love is God's correction. And sometimes God doesn't just say, I'm proud of you. Sometimes God also has to say, you think you're grown. You feel it yourself. So today I want to 
lovingly give you this word from God. I can't, I can't even talk today to the folks who think they're grown. I can't talk today to the folks who think they got it. Because I said last week, your Christianity is measured by your maturity. Your Christianity ultimately is measured by your maturity. Your Christianity is measured by how mature you are. Not by how well you shout. Not by how loud you pray. Not by how good you sing. Or not even by how good you think you are. But there are markers in the scripture that God has given us to show us whether we are where we need to be. And here's one of the signs that I'm not where I need to be. When I think I've already arrived, it's one of the signs that I'm never getting there. When I feel like I'm already there, I'm in danger of not being there at all. Because the Bible teaches us we won't ever reach perfection on this side of eternity. We will always be seeking perfection. We will always be chasing after perfection. But as long as you're wrapped in this thing called a body, you're not going to all, all the way quite get there. Hello, somebody. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? And so I have to recognize and I have to continually recognize that I need to grow up. And here's the thing I love about, here's the fact about maturity. Maturity never tries to conceal immaturity. One of the signs of one of the signs of one of the signs of a lack of maturity is trying to hide flaws. How do I know this? In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve fell, what did, what's the first thing they did? Why didn't they confess? Confession could have been easy for them. What did they do? Instead of confessing, they started to conceal. And immaturity makes you do things that makes no sense. Like we were playing, <laughs> me and my wife were playing how to seek. We were, with our two sons, and they don't understand what hide and seek is yet. It was all right, mama, daddy, go find you, go hide. Both of them did this. <laughs> and we're counting one, two, and so I tried to train them how to hide, but I didn't show them that you got to be quiet when you hide. <laughs> and so I go in my bedroom, and I, I see one of my pillows has magically come to life. And the pillow was laughing. I'm like, well, obviously, my son's behind that pillow. And, and, and the same way I laughed at my son, that's how God was looking at Adam and Eve when they were trying to hide in that garden from him. Because immaturity tries to make you do stuff that don't make no sense. It tries to make you conceal things that can't be hidden. The Bible tells us we cannot hide anything from God, that he knows all and that he sees all. But yet there are some times where we won't come to him and confess and give him what we need. Instead, what do we try to do? We try to hide it and we try to cover it with a nice shout and a nice hallelujah so that maybe he won't see it. Because immaturity seeks to conceal. But maturity will confess and reveal. Am I going too deep too soon? Let me slow down. And I want to deliver you today from a fig leaf theology that you can cover up with good church performance. It, it, it does not work that way. It's time for us to come into alignment with God, maturity with God. And when you're living for God, there's a certain aim that you have. Last week I told you it's the aim. It's what you're living for. It's why you're coming here. You come here for maturity. And I want you to understand, I got to move, man. I got a lot to cover. I, got to, I, I keep getting stuck. Y'all stop mm -hmm in the amen. Two dynamics of life that I want you to understand based off of what we just read in Galatians chapter 5. The two dynamics of your life. The Bible says you have flesh and you have spirit. Flesh is spiritual immaturity. Spirit is spiritual maturity. Okay? Flesh is spiritual immaturity. Spirit is spiritual maturity. Here's a reality that I don't want you ever forget. Here's a reality and here's the truth. Here's a reality and here's the truth. I either have dirt or I have fruit. Y'all hear what I just said to y'all? Either I got dirt or either I got fruit. Either I am spiritually immature or I am spiritually mature. They don't live together. They're on opposite ends of each other. And here's the reality. The reality is I need you to understand. Here's the reality. The reality is the fruit of the spirit is the proof of the spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, I told you, we're in this series called Grown Up Christians. Y'all put my graphic up and leave it up. 
Christian, grown-up Christians, I have to be identified by something. One of the ways that identifies that I'm not with God is I don't have anything to show for it. Remember I told y'all last week that we got to do away with this thing? You know, you ain't supposed to judge me. No, that's not true. In the church, we are supposed to judge each other. We're supposed to judge each other to examine our lives to make sure our brothers and sisters are all being fruit. Meaning, if my life looks like this, one of y'all better check me. One of y'all better say something to me. Don't let me leave this world with a bowl full of dirt. I want to produce some, I want to produce some fruit. I want, I, I want to be a grown-up Christian, and if I'm not being a grown-up Christian, I need other grown-up Christians around me to help me become a grown-up Christian. I need The Bible says iron sharpens iron. That one of the things that we have to get back into is we got to get back into a place where if you love me, you don't agree with everything I do. When you love me, you'll correct me, and you'll challenge me, and you'll tell me what needs to be said if it means I'm going to help you grow in your destiny. I submit to you that the people who tell you what you want to hear are not your friends. They may be your enemies. A friend will make you mad, tell you they love you, and buy you Taco Bell all at the same time. I know you're mad at me. Come on, let's go to Chipotle. I'll buy your burrito. It's going to be okay. <laughs> because I need to understand, and the Bible makes it very clear that I have a flesh and I have the spirit. And the Bible says, those who live by the flesh... Live according to the flesh, but those who walk by the Spirit live according to the Spirit. And he says, the flesh will be marked by dirt, but the Spirit will forever be marked by fruit. What does that mean? That means if I'm saying I have the Spirit of God and all you see is dirt, I'm a liar. And that's what I'm saying. You think you're grown. Well, if you're grown, here's the rally. If you're grown, this is way down in my nose. Like, I hate doing this, but here's the thing. Fruit don't lie. I ain't got to argue about my fruit. I ain't got to defend my fruit. Fruit is going to be fruit. Dirt is going to be dirt. I can call myself fruit for all day long, but come and take a mouthful of this. And, you, and here's the reality. The problem is the Bible says they praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Here's what happens. What happens is you tell people you're an apple, but when they bite into you, they get dirt because you are not what you say you are. And I'm trying to get us into a place where we don't have to pretend and play in church, but we can actually be what we say we are. Meaning I don't have to just say I'm goodness. I can actually be good. I don't have to act like my marriage is okay. I can actually have a healthy marriage. I don't have to, y'all stop. We ain't, it's too early for us to do this, but somebody say bear fruit. All right, sit down. I didn't mean to choose violence this early. I can't just identify you. I need to possess it. Just because I know what it is doesn't mean I have it. Just because I know what goodness is doesn't mean I'm good. Just because I know what purity is doesn't mean I'm pure. Just because I know what faithfulness is doesn't mean I'm faithful. I can't just know, I mean, I can't just know what, I can't just know the right thing to do. I have to do it. It's got to be evident in my life. Like, yeah, I know what the Bible says. I know you ain't supposed to do that. Yeah, but am I doing And And that's spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is being able to separate what you know from what you do. The Bible says grow in knowledge. Absolutely. But the Bible also says don't just be a hearer of the word, but why? Be a doer of the word so that you don't deceive yourself. Because you can hear a lot of scripture. You can hear a lot of church. And here's the thing. Praise God you came to church. I'm proud of you. Listen, hear me clearly. I'm proud that you came to church. I want you to keep coming to church. All our family, I'm proud at the fact that you tuned in. But I want you to recognize and understand that just because I came to church doesn't mean I'm mature. Church, all right, let me get a mic. I come to church to get my instruction. I come to church to get my marching orders for what I'm supposed to do. All right, so let me get this mic. Let me make sure it's turned up in the live stream and all this kind of stuff. Praise the Lord. Experience some kind of problems. Ain't nobody mad, but no, buy a new microphone. I don't see churches that got the worst equipment in the world, 
And instead of buying the equipment, ain't nobody mad but the devil. No, you bought your microphone from Radio Shack, Pastor. You got, ooh, baby, thank you. You pretty today. Let me see you walk away. Amen. I can't just, I can't just deny it. I got to possess it. John 15 says it like this. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him, what's the product? Produces fruit. Produces much fruit. You can do nothing without me. You can do nothing without me. Now, now we read that, but I want y'all to read verse 8. Here's, here's the combination of what God wants from you. Because I, I, I don't want to give y'all my opinion. I want to tell y'all what the word of God says. I want to tell y'all what the word of God says. The word of God says is, my father is glorified by this. If you ever want to know how can I please God, how can I satisfy God, how can I grow in God, I meaning am, am I doing what makes the Lord happy? I, I, here is your answer. How can I please God? My father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove. This ain't legalism. This ain't, we're not under the Ten Commandments no more. The Bible is clearly saying, I'm, I, here, my, my aim is to make you a grown-up Christian. The Bible is saying this, if you are a Christian, you prove it by the fruit that is in your life. Amen. That is a proof of your Christianity. So what I'm saying is this, because I know we get, t- if there's no fruit in your life, I question whether you're a Christian or not. Because fruit is marked by Christianity. And Christianity is marked by fruit. Now here's the reality. Everybody's got to start with the dirt. But if you know anything about gardening, come on. Y'all get out my message. Y'all know what I'm preaching. How much fruit do you have? How much fruit do you have? And I'm learning, man. I'm telling y'all, the older and the, and the, and the longer and the deeper I'm growing into God, it's like, man, it's like right when I get comfortable, he shows me another area where I don't have it. And I recognize, like, I, 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 that's why I, I can't fathom how we got so much time to judge other people. And to be in other kind of business, I, I, can't fa- I can't understand it. Because when you are a real believer, you spend a lot of time dealing with your own self. Being so, I, 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 I just, I don't, I don't understand it. When I hear scriptures like, what glorifies my father is this, that you produce fruit and prove to be my disciples. So the evidence of my Christianity is the fruit that I bear. Amen. It shows that the decision I made wasn't just, I didn't just make it with my mouth, but I made it at a heart level. Amen. Transformation took place. And this is why Romans 8, when I, I promise you I'm not going to go there, but, but the, Romans 8 says this, it pretty much says this, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And that if you live by the Spirit, only then will you put to death the deeds of the flesh. Meaning, meaning, he's saying, and he's saying, here's something that he says in Romans that I don't want you to ever forget. In Romans chapter 8, in your own time, please look it up. Like I said, I'm giving y'all the word of God today because I don't want y'all this kind of message. I got to back myself up with scripture. I want y'all to know I'm saying what God says and it's not what Ricky says. I want y'all to understand the Bible says the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are the sons of God. Somebody said game recognize game. The, the Holy Spirit identifies and he, he, he evaluates our spirit to be able to differentiate whether we are sons of God or whether we are dirt. Because Christianity is fruit. Flesh is dirt. Spirit is fruit. Flesh is dirt. Here's the reality about the dirt. The dirt is dead. Dirt is dead. You have to recognize that by itself, by itself, it can't produce anything. Genesis two, Genesis chapter two, Genesis chapter two, verse seven says, "Then the Lord God took the man out of the dirt of the ground, and He added His breath." into his nostrils and then the man became a living thing when I become mature I let God deal with the dirt 
Everybody starts with dirt. And this is why you, you, you understand dirt can't produce anything. That's why he also says uh, in the same scripture where he says, I am the vine, you are the branch. He says, apart from me, you can't do anything. Why? Because by itself, dirt can't do nothing but be dirt. Somebody shout, dirt is dead. Dirt is dead. What that means is dirt plus dirt equals dirt. Amen. What that means is dirt plus dirt equals dirt. By itself, it can't produce anything. It has to be manipulated. It has to be handled. It has to be matured. It has to be processed. And when you take dirt and put it with seed, woo, you develop something called fruit. <laughs> Anybody who knows anything about gardening, you know this reality. Dirt is dead and it does not support life. You can't produce a garden in dirt. But you can with soil. And soil is made by mixing dirt with the living thing. And I am so glad that God did not leave me as dirt. But the same way that he formed Adam out of the dirt of the ground. I need you to understand that when Jesus came into your life, he brought living seed into a dirty vessel. And this is why we get happy. And this is why we get to praise God. Because when dirt and seed gets together, fruit can become and fruit can bear. And I don't care how dirty you were. I don't care how nasty you were. Paul says in Romans, he says a whole bunch of uh, uh, janky stuff. And he says, as such were some of you, but Jesus came in and he partnered his life with your death and out of your death he brought fruit. Dirt is dead. Dirt is dead. I need y'all to feel and understand dirt is dead. That, that I got more dirt over there. If I go take that dirt and pour it in here, what do I have? I just got more dirt. And I want you to understand your spiritual maturity and your spiritual life that I want you to understand that you can't just work. You got to become. Christianity is not just about doing stuff. Doing things that you think God cares about. You know, like, all right, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm going to give you this today. You know, I've been messed up for the past seven days, so today I'm going to do this. And I get sometimes we tell ourselves that that's how. But, but growing fruit is a process. Growing fruit is a collection of decisions that you make to bring about harvest in your life. It takes intention. It takes focus. It takes endurance. It takes faithfulness. And this is why I started off with Galatians chapter 5, where Paul is trying to tell the church of Galatia, as the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us today, that your flesh and your spirit, they're opposed to each other. Here's the reality. I don't want you to ever forget this. As long as you live, there are two forces in your body, and they both hate each other. They hate each other. See, a lot of your church folks think you get saved and your flesh go away. Find me a scripture in the Bible that says that. Yes, the old man dies. The old man is crucified with Christ. But you still got flesh to deal with. Until the day they put you in the ground, you still got flesh to battle. And the Bible says that they are opposed to each other. They each fight each other so that you don't do what you want to do. So my spirit wants to please God, but my flesh really don't want to. My flesh wants to please myself, but my spirit really don't want it to. They are both evident and they both fight each other. And how they win or if they win will come from the deciding factor of who I give the most attention to. If I give most, if I... If I live dirty, I'm just going, it's what it's going to be. Because dirt plus dirt equals dirt. dirt. Or I can make a decision to live fruitful. I can take dirt, put the seed of God's word in the dirt, and produce fruit. Because dirt plus seed equals fruit. And this is why we need the word of God. Because the word of God are the seeds of life. 
This is why I don't want you just reading and praying out of religious obligation, but I want you to chase God and follow God because it's the seed that you need. The word of God is your come up. The word of God is your win. And I, I get it. Here's the thing, because I want you to understand this because it will never mean as much to you if, if you're only reading it because a pastor told you to. If you're only reading it because a preacher on YouTube told you to do it. I want to get you to the place where you're hungry for more of God. You're hungry for maturity, because I said this last week, when you're hungry, it's different. Your seek is different. When you're hungry, all this is different. What I love is about, there could be about 100 of us here right now. And here's the thing. While I can see your presence, I can't see your intention for coming here. Only God can see that. So I don't know what brought you here. Only God knows what brought you here. And what I'm trying to help us understand is that it's not just about coming, it's about intention. It's, about, it's not just about coming, it's what I'm coming for. And I want to get you on a path where I don't want you chasing things that when you get them, you're going to recognize that they were never worth your chase in the first place. But I want you to chase some things, and at the end of it, you say, I chose the right thing. So I want y'all to stay with me, and I want y'all to be patient, because I'm going to walk y'all through some things. I'm going to walk y'all through some things, and listen, I'm not coming to anybody. I'm literally reading Galatians 5.19. I'm going to tell you, I started with Galatians 5. I'm going to read it, because I want you to understand. If, if you think you've grown, if you think you've grown, then what you're saying is, I'm fruitful. I'm fruitful. If you think you're grown and you think you are not spiritually immature, then your life is, you're saying my life is not a bowl of dirt. My life is a bowl of fruit. Woo, somebody say you think you're grown. All right, y'all, stay with me. I'm, I'm going to go through this fast. I'm not going to rush, but I'm going to go through this fast. Galatians 5, chapter 19 says this. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. Somebody say obvious. obvious. The works of the flesh are obvious. Meaning, I, I, you, you can easily identify in your life what can't produce for you. You will easily be able to distinguish and recognize I can't see flesh, but I can see what it does. What I'm saying to you today, here's it. Immaturity is obvious. It's obvious. And a lot of times I find people arguing back and forth on what maturity is, what maturity is. Immaturity is obvious. It is obvious. And, and, and Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 says this. It's obvious. It's clear. And then the apostle gives us a list. Just so we don't ever be confused, he gives us a list. I'm going to give you all this list. I'm going to send you all home. I'm going to pray for you all. First thing he says is there are four categories of sin. There's, there are sensual sins, there are people sins, or soul sins, there are people sins, and there are social sins. There are sensual sins, there are soul sins, people sins, and social sins. The first level he says is the sensual sins that that, that you can identify a bowl of dirt by. I didn't say this, Pastor Paul said this, adultery and fornication. They are the signs of immaturity. Okay? I want you all to hear me clearly. They are the signs of immaturity. They are the signs of immaturity. I see so many beautiful people looking for all, all love in the right places. I see so many beautiful sisters wanting to get into a relationship with a good man, but they just feel like they just keep getting bad apples. So many good dudes out there that want a solid girl, but find out every time, I, like, man, all of them for the streets. I mean, it's just, it's almost like I, it's like I just can't find what I need. I can't find what I'm looking for. And, 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 and here's what you have to recognize. that. And I, here's, I love y'all. I'm not judging y'all, but you can't change relationships like you change pants. That one of the signs of maturity one of the signs of maturity is understanding that I can never get from a person what only God can give me. Amen. And this is why I got to have a covenant with God. Singles, listen to me. Come here. This is why I give God my body. This is why I make a commitment to be purity. This is why I make a commitment to be pure. This is why I make a commitment to abstain. Why? Because I understand whatever I give God, he takes it and he does more with it. But whatever I give to the dirt, it becomes more, more dirt. 
And I want y'all to understand this. I want y'all to understand this, that you got to invest in things that will protect your soul from being contaminated. And I need you to understand that your flesh is the author of, of confusion. So if I do something or if I align my life with something, come here, husbands, I'm sleeping with somebody right now that ain't your wife. I'm not judging you, but I'm telling you, if you sow dirt, you're going to reap dirt. I want y'all to understand that it's evident that dirt plus dirt equals dirt. And here's the thing I want you to understand. Why is adultery wrong? Why is fornication wrong? Because here's the reality. The Holy Spirit's intention is for me to what? Bear fruit. And so I don't care what we try to say. The Holy Spirit will never lead me into fornication. The Holy Spirit will never lead me into adultery. What does that mean? That means when I'm doing these things, I'm not being led by the Spirit. It means I'm being led by the flesh. So when people are in adultery and fornication, we're not judging you. We're telling you it's flesh. We're trying to get you to get away from the dirt. Why? Because if you put dirt in dirt, you're just going to get dirt back. It's not going to produce. Dirt is dead. It has, no, it has no life in it. And so I want you to understand, John Piper said this, one of my favorite theologians, people who try to love without relying on God's spirit always wind up trying to fill their own emptiness rather than sharing their fullness. That... Whenever I don't invest in things that don't deposit back in me, I'm actually depleting myself. And this is why some of us are tired. And this is why some of us are frustrated because we've given ourselves to so many people, not understanding that every time you lie with that dude, every time you lay with that girl, you make a deposit from your own self to another person. And when that relationship is not covenantal and when it don't have the favor of God, it's taking from you. And when stuff is constantly taking from you, here's what's happening. You're taking nutrients from yourself. And if you stop taking nutrients, the Bible says sin when it's fully grown grown produces death because dirt plus dirt equals and, here's, and, and that, that's what I'm saying just because it feel good don't mean it can't kill you and I'm not trying to get you to be holy just for holy sake but I want you to bear fruit so one of the signs of if you think you grown you're saying dirt ain't in my life that my life is not full of dirt and when you look at my life, all, if all I see is dirt, but, but you think you've grown? More, immature, more impurity. More impurity. Promiscuity. The opposite of purity. I'm going to go to this because I'm getting stuck on these. He's talking about a readiness to sin at any time. He's talking about conduct that knows no restraint. What I'm saying is the spirit would never lead you into that. And what does it mean? If the spirit will never lead me into it, then what is it? What is it? It's dirt. It's dirt. I want to help you understand what is God and what is not God. If it's God, it's going to produce fruit. If it ain't God, it's dirt. Woo, Jesus. Then he says soul sins. Go to the next verse, soul sins. Then he says, he says witchcraft. Um, he says impurity. He says promiscuity. Guys, go to the next verse. Idolatry. Sorcery. Go back. Idolatry. Sorcery, these are soul sins. When people serve the God of their opinion or the God of their own creation, any spiritual powers apart from the true God. Ooh, I'm about to get in trouble with this. All these zodiac signs that we let define us. I want y'all to understand. I want you to understand it's easy to define a person that doesn't know their identity. And I, a lot of us do it, but we don't even understand where it came from. It came from Babylonian culture, where they would look at the sun and they would look at the moon. And based on the proximity of the stars from the sun and the moon, they would develop. That's Leo, and that's Virgo, and that's Scorpio, and that's Cancer, and that's Tarsus, and that's Pisces, and that's Libra. And, and what happens is my birthday comes along in October. My birthday comes along in October on the latter end, and you see me hashtag Libra. Not understanding and here's, here's why I want to bring this to your attention. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not detrimental to you. And I want to bring you out of immaturity and bring you into maturity. Here's immaturity. Anytime I let anything define me outside of scripture, it's dirt. It's dirt. 
I'm not being legalistic today, and I'm not coming at you today, but I, wanna, I want you to, that's why he says, until we reach the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of God, until you know right from wrong. And just because I don't know what's wrong doesn't mean I'm not held accountable for it being wrong. I want to bring you into a mature knowledge of what is right, what is wrong. Nothing provides identity over the Bible for me. I don't have no zodiac sign. I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Why? And I'm going to tell you, why is it dangerous, Pastor Ricky? Why is it dangerous? Because with the subscribe sign is a list of attributes that they say you act like. So what's their focus? Their focus is to define you. Oh, that's a cancer right there. Oh, that's a Scorpio right there. No, I'm a son of God. No, I'm a daughter of God. And I will not be subscribed or defined by some stars in the sky. And here's why I can't be defined by stars in the sky. Because they are a created thing. And I only worship the one and true living God, which is Yahweh, who made the stars. So I will never worship the stars. Instead, I worship the maker of the stars. Because dirt plus dirt equals dirt. But you think you're grown. Well, since I'm already in trouble, burning sage. These new crystals I'm seeing floating around, these like magic crystals where you bring them into your house. See, here's the thing, y'all. I'm telling y'all, the devil prays on our lack of knowledge. And to put confidence into any other power other than the Holy Spirit. All you're doing when you burn sage, you're wasting good seasoning. That should be on some chicken. The spirits don't respond to sage. The spirits respond to the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is the only thing that has the authority to break the power of sin. So you can burn sage all you want to, but until you get it, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave this house, to leave my children, to leave my family. Until you start burning blood, nothing will leave. I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. I promise y'all. Sit down. Sit down, I'm not preaching. Idolatry, idolatry, sorcery, cosmic meditation, cosmic meditation, becoming one with the universe. We are living in a culture where they praise the sun, they praise the moon, praise Mother Nature. Here's the reality. All of those things were created. And anything created is not worthy of my worship. I worship God because I cannot define him. I worship God because I cannot predate him. I worship God because I don't know his end or his beginning. I worship him because trying to imagine him in all his form will make my brain explode. I, anything where I can track its beginning and end, it can't be worshipped because, it because it's fallible. But, you know, we want to become one with the universe. And what it is, is it's a sign of immaturity because it's easier to make a God that you see to bow down to than to have faith in the God that you can't see. This is why God says in the last days, blessed are those who believe but don't see. Because what happens is I will, if I get to a place hard enough, I will create a God to worship. Because everybody wants a God they can see. So I can't see the God of the heaven, but I can see the sun, so I bow down to the sun. And through centuries and centuries, y'all, this has happened. This ain't stuff new. You know, burning sage, crystals, this ain't new stuff. This has been in the Bible. So all y'all old school church folks, stop saying we created this. This was in the Bible long before we ever got here. Long before we ever got here. And if you're that upset about it, you should have had enough Jesus and get to do away with it by now. All right, I'm not, I'm not doing that today. Sorcery in the original language. Sorcery in the original language is a Greek word called pharmakia, where we get the word pharmacy or pharmaceuticals. All right, I see y'all just set up in your chairs. Idolatry sorcery. The use of any kind of drugs, potions, or spells. 
Spirit will never lead you to it. Here's the reality. People, uh, is, is this wrong? Is that wrong? God made it, so should I do it? Here's the reality. The Spirit will never lead you to become impaired. It won't. It won't. I guarantee you, listen, listen to me. The Holy Spirit will never say, you had a long day. You need to get high. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be real, y'all. The Holy Spirit will never say, girl, they just tried you. Go roll you a blunt. He won't do it. Because what does it produce? Now, if you get a subscription for a doctor and it's medication, I get that. But the intent is, sorcery is the intent of using it. The, my heart posture is to escape or to go somewhere. It's not dealing with what I'm going through, but it's to cope with it. It's to medicate. And that's, here's what I'm trying to help you understand. When you're mature, you understand God will never leave you away from his presence. God, will never, God says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my burden is light. My yoke is easy. I, meaning God says, I'm waiting for you to come to me to give you rest. And God says, I need you to understand that I, what I can do for you, we can never do for you. What I could do for you Percocet could never do for you what I could do for you Xanax could never do for you I am your rest I will be your defender I'll make you lie down in green pastures I'll restore your soul I'll, I will renew you God says, if, God says if you let me I'll be your high but, but, if, I, but if I take the dirt in the dirt I just get more dirt I'm going to get off this, but this is why you have to keep getting high. Why? Because it doesn't it done last. Because dirt in itself can't produce anything. Are y'all, are y'all getting understanding? I don't want y'all getting judgment today. I want y'all getting, uh, y'all, y'all be patient. Y'all please let me finish this. People sins. Now we're in people sins. We're in people sins now. Hatred. Next verse. Uh, you get you verse 20. You get hatreds. Strife. Jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions and factions. Stay right there. Hatred. My heart towards people. It's the inner motivation of the ill treatment of others. It's the inner motivation of the ill treatment of others. This is why I said when all this happened with George Floyd, it was tragic. But here's the reality. I don't care how many laws they pass. A law will never change a hate. A law will never eradicate hatred from a human heart. Only the power and the blood of Jesus can do that. It takes transformation for that. We can pass as many laws as we want to, but laws don't change hearts. Laws don't change hearts. And God is saying one of the signs of immature, one of the greatest signs of spiritual immaturity is a person will have disdain and hatred in his heart for another person. That one of the signs, the spirit is life, but the flesh is death. And if the spirit of God is marked by love, then what is the, what is the flesh marked by? It's marked by hatred. It's the, ability to not, it's the ability to not be willing to possess understanding and care for the brother that sits beside you. That you'll come and worship God and lift your hands, but hate your daddy. See, I want y'all to understand because because a lot of us come to church saying God don't work. And what it is is immaturity don't work. That's what it is. And until you get to a level of growth and maturity where you work the principles of the Bible, this God thing will never work. Because the Bible is set up with principles. If then, if by people, then I will. There are some markers that he set up. God says you going to have to, there's this maturity releases the flow and the flavor and, and the blessing and the abundance of God. It's maturity, strife. One of the signs of the flesh, one of the signs of dirt is you live in strife. It can't control yourself. It's lacking the ability to keep peace. It's couples that will sit united in church but live divided at home. And the problem is they come to a place of healing and act like nothing's wrong. It's like going to a hospital and your arm was broken. The doctor says, are you good? You're like, "Mm, I'm okay. But under your jacket, your arm is hanging off. I want y'all to understand that church is for people who don't got their stuff together. That's what it's for. It's for me to say, God, I am messy right now. I ain't been doing right. 
and he gives he puts loving people in the church where you can say, I need help. Get, I've been making bad decisions. I've been making wrong decisions. But what happens? What happens if we come into the church being sick, but we act like we're healthy? And now you got sick husbands and wives who become sick mom and dads, who raise sick kids, who grow up seeing spiritual confusion as their only model of family for them to follow. It's a cycle. Strife is dangerous. It's living in strife. He says jealousy when I want what another person's half. When I'm never satisfied with what I have. When I could get something, I got a bowl. Yeah, but they bowl bigger. It's a lack of contentment. It's a life that's always marked with comparison. I got to keep moving. I'm out of time. Outbursts of anger. Can't control my anger. Come here, man. Every man in this room, come here. If you can't control yourself, it's a sign of immaturity. It's not that you're a bad dude. You're just immature. If I can't harness the power that is myself, I can't be trusted with it. And when I lack control, meaning nobody and no thing should be powerful enough to make you come out of yourself. Can't nobody make me lose me. Why? Because I am to be in full control. When I am spiritually mature, one of the markers of that maturity is control. We're supposed to be spirit-filled believers, but every time somebody makes us mad, we lose our filter, all kind of words come out of our mouths. But you think you've grown? Y'all, it doesn't match. I can't say, God, I'm grown, and my life screams dirt. I can't say, God, I'm grown, and I just cussed my wife out last night. I can't say, God, I'm grown, and I just flipped somebody off in traffic because they pulled me over. I I think the ultimate maturity test for all us believers, you put a camera in that car and drive around with us. I think all of us will be at the altar. All of us will be at the altar. Y'all, the camera's in. You're like, let me go ahead and get up this altar and repent because I know you saw what I did yesterday. (laughs) What I'm saying is this, y'all. Here's what I'm saying. If you, if you, being spiritually mature is admitting where you're immature. And all I'm saying is this, stop acting like you got it all together when you don't. The only way to deal with the immaturity in your life is to be real with the fact that it's immature. God, I have a problem with my anger. Holy Spirit, help me not to lose control when I get mad. Holy Spirit, help me when all I can see is red and I'm about to explode. Holy Spirit, take my life. Have deeper control. Instead of saying, y'all know I get angry sometimes. Do something about the dirt. You medicate the dirt with the seed of God. And as long as the Bible tells me be angry and sin not, and I get angry and sin, I got dirt. Because dirt is dirt. I'm sorry whoever got the vacuum up here. I, I apologize. A lot of dirt on the stage. Blowing up on people. Selfish ambitions. Is this okay, y'all? Can, can y'all please let me? Selfish ambitions. One of the signs of immaturity, selfish ambition, one of the signs of immaturity is marked by this. If your life, if the only thing you're concerned about in your life is what's in it for me. Let me tell you why, 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 why millennials right now, I love our millennials, but why, why we can't be trusted to build great organizations and why we can't be trusted to build great families and things like that because we have been trained from, I don't know, just, we just feel like the world owes us something. It's called entitlement. Where, where we are, and, I, and I, I'm in millennial generation, so you know, I get it because I have to check it in my own life where, where we feel like we're owed something. It's like an entitlement. It's like I'm only going to serve things that serve me. And so if I'm not getting anything from it, I'm not participating. And I, got, and I want you to understand that it's a grave sign of immaturity. It's a grave sign of dirt. It's selfish ambition. It's what's in it for me. What's in it for me? Volunteer in the church on Sunday morning. So I got to go to bed Saturday night? Nah, fam. Nah, fam. You supposed to be an usher at a green call. You gonna be here tomorrow? Oh, oh. 
What I mean by selfish, what I mean by selfish ambition, and I'm not coming at us, but here's the reality: we we do what we want to do. If we got a vacation in Miami and the flight is at 7 a.m., we up at 4 a.m. to make sure we don't miss that flight, cause we can turn up in Miami. Like it's it's hashtag vacation. Like yo, millennials, talk to me. Because when it's something that I want, why? Because I'm only motivated when the ambition is geared towards me. Millennials will hustle when their come up is at question. Meaning if you show us what we get out of it, then we'll get excited. But life don't work like that. Christianity don't work like that. Jesus says, I come not to be served, but I come to serve. That's why he says, therefore, the greatest among you will mark them because they will be the least among you. They won't be chasing title and positions. They'll be looking for towels because they'll be serving people. Am I helping anybody today? Dissensions and factions. What that pretty much means is divisive in nature. You just live to be divisive. I mean, I'm talking about, uh, is, I'm, I'm talking about you're the kind of person where if everybody says blue, you say red just because. There's something in your anatomy that just will not submit to people. You just can't, I mean, I, I mean people have to trick you. They have to tell you not to do it for you to do it. Y'all, we're not going at 5 o'clock. We're going at 4. And you're like, well, I'm going at 5. Well, I know that's why we told you that. <laughs> it's when you're the, and I'm, I'm being light about it, but it's opinion wars. Cyber fighting. Got them big, strong thumbs on Facebook because you be just out there putting your thoughts out there. Got a whole lot to say. I just want to tell you, I don't know if, you, I don't know if anybody told you, but I feel like Holy Spirit... Maybe it's my time to tell you this. You don't have that many haters. On our family, you don't have that many haters. What it does is your flesh, your immaturity, will create enemies where there are no enemies. Will create opinions where there are no opinions. Will tell you people say things and think things about you, and reality is they don't even know your name. It will, make you, it will make you say, she didn't speak to me, and he didn't speak to me. And the reality is, they had the worst day of their life, and they weren't even thinking about you. It, it causes you. it causes you to focus. It causes you to focus on haters, and you live your life looking to respond to negativity. And you're trying to prove people wrong who shouldn't have never had that much influence on you in the first place. It's being focused on the wrong thing. Your coworker ain't your enemy. Your friend is not your enemy. Your husband ain't your enemy. Your child's classmate mother, she ain't your enemy. Your landlord is not your enemy. Your boss is not your enemy. Your dog and your hamster, they're not your enemy. Stop looking to make enemies. It is a sign of dirt. It is a sign of immaturity. When you walk into a new setting looking for beef, Come in, how was it today? I don't really know. I don't, I don't, the vibe is weird here. <laughs> Come on, y'all know. Y'all better talk to me in here. I just don't, I don't like how she was looking. Like, it was just it was suspect. You, you didn't see that? I don't, I don't know. We come into things not looking for unity, but we're looking, it's when you're looking for opportunities to divide. And when you're a believer, you are attracted to unity. You are to produce unity. We're not cliquish. Church is the most, church is the, is the largest country club in the world. Why? Because you come to church and you rock with your, your core people. Y'all sit together. Y'all only talk to each other. Y'all go to dinner together. And then you go home and live your life. Because why? Because church is, church is a country club. You don't, you don't, even if somebody in church you don't agree with, God forbid, y'all have a conversation. Whoa, what might happen if you did that? But instead, we look to the, and y'all wonder why God don't bless and God don't move, because it's full of dirt. You know the Bible, but you're messy. Okay, I'm going to leave y'all alone. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh. We wrestle not against, we don't wrestle against it. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Why? Because when flesh and flesh fights, it just produces 
or flesh. When blood fights blood, it just spills more blood. It doesn't produce anything. And anything that doesn't produce life, the spirit will never lead you to do. And this is how I can tell you for a fact it's 100% dirt. And I don't want any of you in this room thinking you got fruit when actually you got dirt. Envy. Pretty much grief from another person is good. Next verse, envy. Grief from another person is good. Envy is this. If you had the chance, you would take it. If you could do it and not get caught, you would take it. You would take it. Wanting something so bad, where even at the cost of the other person losing it, it will still bring you joy to have it. That's envy. And this is why envy is one of the backbones of the most evil, of the biggest evils in our world. Because no one is ever satisfied with what they have. It puts you on the appetite to never be satisfied. It makes you always want more. And this is why bank robbers never just rob one bank. That's why they always end up getting caught. Why? Because it makes you envious for more. It feeds greed. And greed ain't got time to get into it, but greed is behind the prison system. Yeah, you know, I, I ain't doing that. I'll be here all day. Nope, not doing it. Nope, nope, ain't doing it. Social sins. Social sins. Social sins. Envy. Drunkenness. 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 It's the desire or pursuit of being impaired. It's when it's a coping mechanism for my pain, for my trauma, for my stress, for my fear. A lot of times, we, 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 the Bible doesn't, the Bible, I'm not getting into this theological battle. But can, can I drink or can I not drink? Here's what the Bible says. Here's what the fact the Bible says. The Bible says, don't be a drunkard. The Bible says, don't be drunk. The Bible says, to be sober. Be vigilant. Meaning, my role as a Christian is to maintain sobriety. And I cannot actively pursue the will of God while being impaired at the same time. The same way I told you the Holy Spirit will never lead you to get high, he'll never lead you to get drunk. Holy Spirit, nobody can ever say in this room, you know, God, God told me yesterday, go get a beer out of the refrigerator. <laughs> he, he don't talk like that, y'all. He doesn't lead us into that. And what I'm saying is, 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 is I'm not here to tell you whether you can have a beer or not, but what I want to tell you is, what's the place that the beer holds on your heart? Is it a God for you? Are you the dad? Are you the dad where your kids get fear when you walk in with a Hennessy bottle? Because they know after the Hennessy, you start hitting. Because when you're drunker, you lose your ability to control. When you're drunker, you lose your ability to reason. You lose the power over yourself. And this is why drunk people fight. This is why they argue. I, I can't even get into it. But that's why the seven spirits of alcohol is gin, whiskey, tequila, everything we know. Why? Because what's the... Pr- and, and, and every one of them have a characteristic. All y'all know people right now, I don't touch that brown. Last time I drank that brown, I woke up Thursday and I was at somebody's house. They didn't know who they was. They didn't know who I was. I don't mess with that brown. Y'all better, talk, y'all better be real with me in this room. Because they all have characteristics. No, I can't drink vodka. Vodka 99. No, me and vodka don't mix. Because the 99, Lord Jesus, I was on the vodka. T- Why? Because when these things come into your life, they don't lead you to bear fruit. And this is why I can tell you in confidence they're not from the Spirit. I don't want to condemn you, but I want you to understand that if you put dirt with dirt, you're just going to get more dirt. And I don't want you doing something dirty thinking you're going to be fruitful for it. Because I want you to get to spiritual maturity. I want to help you grow. So I'm not condemning anybody in the room, but I want, you to, I want to understand you, alcohol cannot be a God in your life. One of the signs of immaturity is not being able to control that area. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. Are y'all hearing it out of love? Not judgment and condemnation, but love, because I want us to be better as a people. And I want you to chase things that will produce more life in your life. Carousing, the Bible talks about carousing, is pretty much unrestrained living. It's pretty much a disruptive nature. 
It's, 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 you ever seen the people that party don't care about nobody else, but they party. It's like just, tonight we're get okay. <laughs> it's just, their intention is to, is to just have fun and tear stuff up. It's, it's that kind of mindset. It's, 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 when you're a believer, it's not caring about your witness. It's not caring about who you could possibly lead astray with your actions. It's when you easily say this, I ain't nobody leader. And here's the reality. When you're a believer, you instantly become a leader to the world. Instantly. When you come to God, congratulations, you're a leader now. And the God says, whom much is given, much is required. All right. Don't destroy your destiny with what you do today. Don't destroy tomorrow by what you post today. Just, just, just don't do it. And then Paul says this. Paul says this. Envyness, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. Because the list I just gave you is not an exhaustive list, but it's a descriptive list to help you recognize. What Paul is saying is this. Anything that does not produce life for you is dirt. Does it? So every, not everything is a matter of whether it's right or wrong, but is it beneficial for me? The question I want you to ask, when you're spiritually mature, Here's the question you ask yourself. What the thing that I'm about to do, that I'm about to say, that I'm about to think, that I'm about to feel, that I'm a, the person I'm about to call, whatever I'm about to do, here's the reality. Will it produce life or will it produce dirt? Is it a desire of my flesh or is it desire of my spirit? When you're mature, you will make yourself have that conversation because when my aim is to bear fruit, I recognize I got a limited partnership with dirt. Are y'all hearing me today? Flesh forfeits. Fruit inherits. Flesh forsakes. Fruit follows. I want y'all to understand the fruit. And the reason why the fruit of the spirit. All my life I've been been taught wrong. I, I I I thought it was the fruits of the spirit. It is not the fruits of the spirit. It is a plural word. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's a singular word. It's a singular word. Y'all know what that means? That means everything I'm about to give you, they work in concert with each other. And the reason why it had to be singular is because... Okay, I'm going to wait for that one. Here's what I want you to understand about fruit and how out of time we got to go home. Fruit is relational. It, fruit screams Maturity. Why do I want you to bear fruit in your life? Because here's the reality. When you show fruit, I know you've been with God. I know you done been through some stuff, and I know you've grown, and I know you have survived, and I know you have matured because your fruit stands up for you. Your fruit talks for you. Your fruit testifies for you. Your fruit speaks for you. Your fruit screams relationship. When I got fruit, I've been in a relationship with God. When I got fruit, whoo, it's I'm, I'm reproductive. What that means is I'm transformative wherever I go. You can put me in any environment. Put me in any environment. You throw, you throw dirt in any environment, and you just made it dirty. You throw fruit in any environment, and you just gave it a capacity to become a forest. Why? Because fruit in itself, whoo, help me Jesus, has the ability to reproduce itself because every fruit has got a seed in it. This is why God says, I have the word in my heart. Why? Because when I have the word in my heart, I have the capacity to walk around and recreate life in any situation. So if you put me in a prison, I still got life in me. If you put me in a hospital room, I still got life in me. (laughs) Why? Because my fruit reproduces after itself. The Bible says a tree can only produce after its own kind. And this is why you have to be fruitful. It's because my job as a believer is to be reproductive. But if all I got in me is dirt, then all I do is I can make my fruit dirty. But when I got fruit, and and, 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 and interested, did if you pour this on this, it will ruin this. But if you pour this on this, 
it will grow this. This is the power of God. I gotta, y'all, I got to move. I got time for this with y'all. You can't argue with fruit, y'all. Well, here's what I'm saying. Grown equals fruit. Grown equals fruit. I, I, hate, I, don't want, I hate leaving people with negative. I'm going to give you the fruit of the spirit, and we're going to go home. But the fruit of the spirit. Somebody said, but the fruit of the spirit. The fruit, of the spirit. fruit of the spirit is love. It is love. It is limitless. It is unconditional. It is transformative. Every sin I listed on the flesh side, every single one of them, every single one of them, hatred, envy, strife, jealousy, all sexual immorality, all sorcery, all hatred, every last one of them had to abandon love to be committed. To do those things, the first thing you have to do is forsake love. Because love is the power to do right. Love is the power to do right. And this is why it says, this is why God says, you want, a, you, want, you want one verse to fulfill all the law? Love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because when you have the capacity to love your neighbor as yourself, only God gives you that power. Only God gives you the power to respond lovingly to people that hate you. Only God gives you the power to forgive a daddy who abandoned you when you were young. Only God's love will give you the power to say, I forgive you to people who molested you and damaged you. It's, love is a, super, it's a superpower. And this is why God says, by this, by this fruit shall you know. That all men are my disciples. It's it's by how they love. Not how they preach. Not how they teach. Not how they dance. Not how good they smell. It's if they can love. In any circumstance, if they can love, they want to mind. No matter what you do to them, they will love. If anything or anyone can make you stop loving, you need to check it because it's dirt. It's a love that can't be taken from you. I want y'all to understand because it, love, it gives definition. It defines things. It's the language of Christianity. Love is the very language of Christianity. In America, we speak English. In China, they speak Chinese. In the kingdom of God, we speak love. Joy, I got to move. The capacity to abide and remain even in hard circumstances. Joy is is the strength of God overriding the weakness of man. Joy is surviving what other people crumble from. Joy is, like Isaiah says, everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Joy will make you sing in a prison. Joy will make you dance in a dungeon. Joy is God's sustainability. No matter what, no, no matter who comes, no matter who goes, I'm good. That's joy. Joy is what grandma say. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and so therefore the world can't take it away. Because it's a fruit of the spirit. It's a product of the fruit of the spirit. It's not circumstantial. So I don't have to consult how my life is feeling to let myself feel joy. Because the spirit of joy. The kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but what is it? Love, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit. Peace. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace. The power over problems. It's the power over problems. It doesn't remove the presence of the power. It doesn't remove the presence of the problem. But it takes the power away from the problem. Peace is a lifting agent. It's a divine wall of protection over you and your family. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. It's a peace that has no expiration date. It does not die. It's a peace that will let you sleep in the middle of a storm. It's a peace that will let you transform an atmosphere. 
You'll walk into chaos and bickering and all kinds of crazy. It's a peace that will cause you to walk into a crazy house and like Jesus had the authority to say, peace be still. You can walk into hard situations. You can walk into messy situations and you can bring peace when everybody else is bringing drama. Peace is wholeness. Patience. Endurance. It's, it's your second wind. It's when you feel like you can't take it anymore. You feel like you can't make it anymore. The Spirit gives you the ability to keep going. It generates hope in all things. And no matter what kind of report you get, no matter what bad news you get, it's the ability to look for Jesus and to find his peace and his, and, 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 and his calmness and his presence in anything. It's what the Bible calls unshakable. It's what the Bible calls unmovable. It's what the Bible calls always abounding. It is a work of confidence that God does in your life. The fruit, the one of the fruits of God is called patience, and patience is confidence. Kindness and goodness models Jesus. Shay, you can play. I'm done. Models Jesus. Kindness and goodness, it models Jesus. It models Jesus. It puts you in a position where you can be trusted with God's greatest harvest, which is people. When kindness and goodness emulate from this place, there won't be enough seats in this room for what God will bring into this church. When kindness and goodness is our aim and our focus and our mission, people will finally be standing in line to enter. Kindness and goodness produces influence. It creates culture. It unlocks levels. Goodness doesn't just follow me. I I realize it doesn't just follow me. It flows through me. Goodness doesn't just follow me. It also flows through me. It's not just for me but it's for everybody who encounters me. Faithfulness releases God's favor, opens up the doors. Gentleness, control power, allows for greater assignments. You can be trusted. Self-control, you can handle power and authority. God will give you freedom. It'll unlock levels. Standing up all over this room, Galatians 6. Apostle Paul says this to the church of Galatia about fruit. Go to Galatians 6, verse 7, 8, and 9. Thank y'all for sticking out with me. This is the last week of the series, and we out of here. There's no more grown up Christians. Today's the last day in it. Concerning the fruit, in the next chapter, Paul says this. We've always quoted this. Well, now we get to quote it in context. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, he will reap. Because the one who sows to the flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. But the one who sows to the spirit will reap eternal life from the spirit. So let us not get tired of doing good. For we will reap a harvest at the proper time if we don't give up. We don't give up. Your success is connected to your fruit. When you produce fruit, you secure yourself. Your fruit is the key to you unlocking heaven into your life. If you're in this room, you say, I'm tired of life the way that it is. Let me, tell you what your, let me tell you what your soul is screaming. I'm ready for some fruit. You get to a point where you're tired of the dirt and you're saying, I'm ready for fulfillment. I'm ready to be able to produce from within. I'm tired of needing external things to be whole. But I'm ready for God to produce in me everything I need to be what he's called me to be. The Bible says Christ is in you, the hope of glory. 
There's a work that God wants to do in you. All over this room, every hand is lifted, every eye is closed. There's a work that God wants to do in you. Father, I'm asking right now that you will release the wind of power, of transformative mercy, transformative grace. Today I ask and I pray that you give us the ability to deal with the dirt. Today we lift up our hands. Woo, today we lift up the dirt. We lift up the thing that by itself can't do anything for us. Today we surrender the dirt to you and we ask you, God, water up my dirt with your word. God, live on the inside of my heart. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Give me the capacity and the hunger to chase after you. Father, I give, I give, I give instruction and ice in the flowing wind to every man in this room, every man watching online. God, let that brother give the spirit the power over his flesh. I speak right now that every brother in this room will get the power to master his flesh and he will be a king and he will be a priest God I speak over every woman in this room every girl in this room God would you empower her right now to lay down her feelings and to lay down her flesh and to lay down her desires and to lay down her anxieties and to let go of that anger and to let go of that pain and to let go of that resentment God to let go of what they did to her 10 years ago or what they did to her last week or what her daddy did to her or what her mama didn't give her or what her how, 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 how her friend betrayed her or how her daughter isn't speaking to her God I pray that you will release and deal with her dirt and let her produce fruit I'm praying that you will bring your presence to every pain point in this room I'm praying that you will bring the seed of God the word of God into dirt so that we will produce fruit while every head is bowed where every eye is closed if you're in this room you're saying I need that relationship with Jesus need to make a commitment to Jesus. If you did it last week, you don't have to do it again this week. But if you're in this room and you're saying, I've never made that commitment to Jesus, I need the spirit in my life. My flesh is too strong and I need the spirit of God in my life. If that's you, throw that hand up. I need the spirit of God in my life. I need to give God my complete surrender. I need to give him all. Come on, if that's you, just lift that hand up high. No shame. No shame in this room. I see that hand. My sister, I want to give God my life. All our family, I can't see your hands. For the sake of everybody in the room, everybody shout, Lord Jesus. I'm ready for fruit. Come into my heart. Save me. Transform me. Today, I make the commitment to be a grown-up Christian. In Jesus' name, amen. Wait, don't go yet. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you know the next time we post a video. We pray that you heard a word from God and we're praying for your future, your purpose, and your destiny to be everything God designed it to be. And hey, if you're ready to take a deeper dive and be connected with the ministry, head over to our website at cwcconline.org to learn just how to do that.